Hi, my name's Sheldon. I'm 17 years old. I found a crypt in a cemetery, and I'm still shocked by what I saw inside. I'm pretty sure every family has some passion that each family member shares to some extent. Our family certainly does. My father and I love exploring abandoned mansions and other abandoned human settlements together. It's not that we dream of finding a buried fortune. No, we've always been genuinely interested in old things. It's so exciting to dig up an ancient wooden com or some jewelry from another century. We've accumulated quite the collection of stuff at our house. It was always about the thrill of discovery. Every trip led us further away from home. Usually, we look up abandoned settlements online, but we often find more empty houses along the way to our destination. We search them too if we can. We found lots of stuff, like ancient pottery shards, but our best find was a small crown. Here's a little secret my father taught me. Look out for bizarre old trees. These trees make good landmarks, so travelers would often stop there to rest or even set up camp for the night. Occasionally, one of them would lose a valuable object or even bury their valuables under the landmark to pick them up later. We dug up the most amazing thing under one of those trees. It was a small bead embroidered bag that contained a tattered piece of paper covered in small handwriting. A warrior from another age wrote a letter to someone. I can't wait to try and decipher it. I mean, it's very interesting. One day, when we were walking through the woods, we noticed a grave close to the path. There were two bodies facing one another. They'd mostly decomposed, but they looked like a man and a woman. We assumed they were a pair of lovers who had been killed or buried alive. We were able to see the whole picture because the bodies were covered with a piece of burlap, which had decayed over the years, but it kept soil out of the grave. There was an amulet, which probably used to belong to the man, two silver rings on their fingers, and a thick braid of woman's hair. I wonder what they did to deserve an untimely death in an unmarked grave in the woods. What an awful fate! I couldn't get that image out of my head, until another discovery overshadowed it. For our next expedition trip, we picked a small forest hundreds of miles away from home. We knew for a fact that there once been a village and that the place was overgrown with sparse forest now, but we failed to find any evidence of it. Wherever we tried to dig, all we found was plastic bottles or caps, which were obviously modern. The local foragers have a habit of eating lunch in the woods and burying their trash on the spot. We'd all but turned back home when we saw an abandoned cemetery. It was located in the middle of dense forest, as if no man had gone there before. By then, we were frustrated by our fruitless search. So we would have turned back anyway if one of the graves hadn't attracted our attention. It was kind of detached from the rest. There was a hollow next to the grave, where soil had caved in. This piqued our interest. It looked like an adventure. At a glance, it seemed like a grave robber had dug it up. Was it the grave of someone rich? We were curious to find out. When we came closer, I saw a metal grid entwined with a creeping plan in the bottom of the hollow. I grabbed the grid and pulled it up. To my astonishment, it easily gave in to reveal an enormous pit. No, actually it was a tunnel that seemed to stretch deep below the ground. We really wanted to go in, but we didn't have a flashlight with us and our phones had run out of battery. The mysterious grave was all we could think about on our way home. What's there? Why is the entrance covered with a grid? Who built it? The place is in the middle of nowhere. Did someone come all the way there just to dig a tunnel? Why? I couldn't sleep for the entire night. I kept seeing the dark dungeon entrance before my eyes. Dad seemed to be unable to sleep either. At dawn, he was already banging on my bedroom door. It was time to head out. We heard to pack our flashlights and power banks. Five hours later, we were back in the forest and approaching the grave. Everything was just the way it was the day before. Nobody had come since we left. All the things remained intact. And so we removed the grid and went down the tunnel. It had a peculiar smell of decay, which didn't really seem surprising at the time. Every step echoed through the crypt. As if on cue, a rock would fall after a loud step or a bat would fly into our faces. All of a sudden, my flashlight illuminated large dolls sitting on the ground. They were carefully arranged along both sides of the tunnel. They looked anything but amusing. Outright creepy, actually. Their faces were weird in a way I can't even describe. I was really frightened but Dad found the nerve to pick one of them and carry it outside to have a closer look. Oh my god, those weren't dolls at all. They were the mummified buddies of young girls dressed up to look like dolls. Dad told me to get in the car straight away. After he carried the fox doll back inside and replaced the grid, we went back running. 
It took us half an hour to reach the car, but as exhausted as he was, Dad said we couldn't take time to rest. We needed to leave the cursed place as fast as possible. We drove in silence for a while, trying to process the things we'd seen. When he caught his breath a little, Dad said our actions may have brought a curse upon our family. It's a very bad omen to touch buddies like those. We felt disturbed for a while, expecting trouble. Thankfully, nothing of the sort has happened yet, and it's already been over a month. Does anybody know what we should do? Should we alert archaeologists or the police? Should we just leave the mummies alone and forget about them? Please let us know in the comments, guys. Do you guys want more episodes? Then press the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell. Want to see your own story? Then send them over to this email here.